Hi, dear brethren. I would like to share with you a very important message regarding the times we are living in. The title of this message is Facing Times of Danger. But before we start with this message, I would like to ask you to join me in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, dear Lord, for the opportunity that we have today to listen to your word. And uh, as we go through this presentation, dear Lord, give us the understanding and the knowledge to see the signs that are happening in the world that are telling us, dear Lord, that something great is soon to come to this world. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to still listen to your word in this time of freedom dear lord to listen to your word in this time of the solemn events thank you lord for our families our friends and people and we pray dear lord for the people who've been affected by the this this virus dear lord the covid 19. we know that the world is in distress and afflicted and we ask you, dear Lord, that you give us the hope and the courage, dear Lord, to go forward to eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Romans chapter 13, verse 11, we find, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of his lip for now is our salvation nearer than we believed this is a very truthful verse because we understand that our salvation is nearer than when we believed and the time we are living in today is a solemn one that's why the Bible says it is time high time to awake out of his lip you know, brethren, in a review of the recent events that happened, especially here in Australia, we were witnesses of the distractions taking place last year and also to the beginning of this year, 2020, in January. The fires that were in the news, in the Daily Telegraph, in the West Australian Journal, and, you know, these headlines, Terror Coast or The Apocalypse Now, and uh, also the news in the world talking about the Australian bushfires, you know, the destruction of the animals and uh, people risking their lives to save also, like this woman risks uh, or risk her life to rescue a koala from a fire in Australia. And uh, all these things happening. And Australia was the center of attention last year because of the fires. And everywhere talking about this Australian a blaze and uh, the destructions of the fire and the lives and the livelihood affected in this country. So you see here the images and also the map here of the states and the places where the fire was happening during last year and beginning of this year 2020. So this According to the Bible, according to the Spirit of Prophecy, these are signs of things that were going to come just before the second coming of Christ. Also, we see here an image of the COVID-19, the coronavirus, that is all spread in the world. So, the total cases, for example, in the worldwide, if you see here, in March 25, this is a recent information actually, I found this information on the 27th today. So this information is from March 25th, right, 2020. So the total cases in the world of the coronavirus of people affected by this virus is 471,035 people. That's in all the world as per today. And also another information here, total cases, 
total cases excluding mainland China. So in March 25th, 389,750. 70, uh, so all these cases, right, of people affected and infected by this virus over the world. Then the daily cases excluding mainland China, the same thing, daily cases of 48,394 people daily being infected and that is outside of China. And uh, the cases now in this distribution here in this image, we find that 15.30% of the cases, which is 81,340 cases only in mainland China, and outside China, 84.70% of the cases spread in the world, in other countries, 450,459 cases. So you see this pandemic bringing affliction and concern and uh, fear to people that fear is being spread as well all over the world and um, we see that all these countries that were affected like the top 10 countries for example china italy united states spain germany Ireland, france south korea switzerland united kingdom and so on we have all this information here that cases that are increasing every single day and deaths as well increasing and we find here Australia in these numbers so by today that number 1286 is more than that actually and uh, more than I think more than seven people that died already in the country so you see last year fire coming to us and then this year this virus being spread in the world what people's attitude were you know for example we have these um, people you know being scared of being um, quarantined and away from everything people run into the shops and buying toilet papers and uh, people fighting you know you saw that on the news and there is a saying that a crisis reveals the character of people a crisis reveal of who we really are as a people and that's what we saw in the world not only here in Australia but also this kind of attitude in all other parts of the world as well taking place and that is actually the consequence you know what fear can lead humanity to do then you might find it interesting and funny as well but this is something that actually happened you know people selling um, the toilet paper rolls, you know, um, on eBay or in other uh, websites where they can sell stuff. Look, look at this for um, one roll of paper for a thousand dollars. And guess what? There was one bid of someone trying to to buy this this toilet paper. So you see the attitude that is was taking place or it's taking place at the moment because of this virus. Not only that, but um, the reaction of some companies as well, you know, trying to calm down people's um, behaviors. And this one from Clinics Bathroom Australia. Australia, don't panic. We are working around the clock at our meal in South Australia to keep the supermarket shelves stocked with Clinics Complete Clean Toilet Paper. As you can see, we won't be running out anytime soon. It might seem very funny, actually, right? These things happening and people getting into panic because of all this situation and uh, we see the reaction of people in society just because of this pandemic taking place now the spirit of prophecy in the desire of ages page 636 paragraph one it says something interesting there everything in the world is in agitation. Isn't it true? It is true, right? The signs of the times are ominous, like dreadful. Coming events cast their shadows before. The Spirit of God is withdrawing from the earth and calamity 
follows calamity by sea and by land. So you see all these things happening in the world today. Then, Testimony to Ministers, page 444, it says, We hear now of earthquakes in diverse places, of fires, of tempests, of disasters by sea and land, of pestilence. And guess what? The COVID-19 is a pestilence actually spreading the world. Of famine. What weight do these signs have upon you? This is only the beginning of what shall be. You see, the Spirit of Prophecy says here, all these signs, you know, earthquakes, fires, and tempests, and pestilence, and pestilence, and famine, all these things are happening right now. And it says, and this is actually a quote that is found in the Bible as well. This is only the beginning. The Bible says, only the beginning of sorrows. And it says here, this is only the beginning of what shall be. So, this is the fulfillment of, of prophecy and we were told that already Jesus said to his disciples that these things were going to happen just before his second coming and we are witnesses that these things are happening before our eyes in 1st Peter 1 24 it says for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass the grass withereth." And the flower thereof falleth away. We've been witnesses of this Bible verse as well. People dying. You know, the Bible says we are as grass. We don't take anything when we die. And uh, the flower, as the flower thereof falleth away, so is the life of a human being. But guess what? We may pass away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you you know the word of the lord is enduring forever and everything that we find in scripture is being fulfilled you know all the promises of god are conditional and these signs of the times are actually the fulfillment of what prophecy was telling us of what prophecy has foretold for us to be ready today you know many people are afraid and uh, the time is just going on and people are concerned about the things that are happening in the world and uh, sometimes we as christians might be scared of these things as well it may create some fear on us you know it is not wrong to feel fear but actually, fear may have two effects in our lives. One, to have the kind of attitude, you know, like going to the shops and getting into panic and uh, try to uh, get everything for yourself and being selfish. Or the other attitude could be an attitude of trust in the Lord. Now, all these things happening, all these signs of the times being fulfilled in our time, then what do we need as a people? What do we need as Christians today? So the first thing that we need as Christians today, dear brethren, is faith that marvels God. Yes, we need that type of faith today, a faith that marvels God. And in the scripture, we find this information about someone's faith that marveled our Lord Jesus Christ. And we find this in Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. And it says there, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. It continues. So here at Capernaum, you see the map here, right? Uh, close to the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was there. And the miracle was going to happen there in Capernaum. Jesus was marveled because of this faith of a Gentile, not because of the faith of someone that belonged to the people of Israel, to the Jewish nation, but a Gentile. It says here in verse 6, And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. 
And Jesus saith unto him, verse 7, I will come and heal him. So Jesus offers himself to go to his place. But then the centurion says to him in verse 8, He answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. You know, brethren, when I read this Bible verse, I try to, you know, be in the shoes of this centurion, and I see myself not having this kind of faith. You know, Jesus actually was telling him, let me go to your place. I want to heal your servant. And guess what? The centurion actually rejected, right, this um, opportunity of Jesus going to his place. But he said, I'm not worthy, right, that thou shouldest come under my roof. You see, he understood of the power of Jesus Christ when he said, speak a word only and the servant shall be healed. This is the faith, dear brethren, that we need today, brothers and sisters. This is the faith that God is asking us to have today. And He has given a measurement of faith to all of us. And that's written in the Bible. Then in Matthew 8, verse 9, it says, For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. So, this centurion understood of the power of Jesus Christ. He understood that Jesus, with just a single word, could heal his servant. And in verse 10 we find, And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed him, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Imagine Jesus saying these words today, right? There might be people who do not know the message that we know, and they may be trusting the Lord with such a faith that is marveling God Himself. But what about us today? Do we have the faith that is able to marvel the Lord Jesus Christ? And that is the faith, dear brethren, that we need today. A faith that trusts fully in God, in His protection, in His love, and His tender care. That is the faith that we need today. We don't need to be afraid of the signs of the times. We don't need to be scared of these things happening in the world. Of course, of course, we need to trust in the Lord and in His strength and in His grace, We need to do our part to be protected, right? Humble as a dove and also wise as a serpent. We need that. But one of the most important things today for us as a people is that we need to exercise the faith that the centurion had, the faith that marveled the Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of this encounter of the centurion and Jesus Christ, In verse 13, we find, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Brethren, that is faith, believing without sin. And that is the faith we need, you know. The Spirit of Prophecy assures us that God has not forsaken this world. And the Word of God as well is telling us that God is looking after the people of this world. God is looking after His people, you know. We don't know when our time is going to come to be called to rest or to die. But if it is God's will that we may face this situation, even being infected or affected by this COVID-19, well, we leave that in God's hands as well because He knows what is best for us. But even in these perilous times that we're living in, we need to exercise the faith that is able to marvel the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what kind of faith 
are you showing? What kind of faith do you have today? Do you have the faith that this centurion had? Or you are an unbeliever? And if we are unbelievers, we need to ask the Lord to help our unbelief. We need to ask the Lord to strengthen our faith, and He will do it. We can pray the prayer, Lord, help my unbelief. And He's willing to do that, dear brethren. So please don't forget the, th the first thing that we need in these dangerous times is the faith that marvels Jesus Christ. In the Great Controversy, we read also in page 622, those who exercise but little faith now are in the greatest danger of falling under the power of satanic delusions and the decree to compel the conscience. So the context of, of this paragraph is actually the Sunday law decree, when it talks about the decree, right? And the time just before the time of trouble. And if today it says there that if we are exercising little faith, then in the greatest danger, in the time of trouble, we are going to fall into delusions and also we are going to be compelled to keep a full Sabbath and we will do it. That's why, brethren, it is important that today we exercise the faith that marvels Jesus. It is important that we ask the Lord to help us, to give us the faith that we need. It is not time to doubt, but to believe, dear brethren. The seasons of distress and anguish before us will require a faith that can endure weariness, delay, and hunger. A faith that will not faint, though severely tried. The period of probation is granted to all to prepare for that time. So that is the period the period we're talking about the period that where we are going to use this faith is the time of trouble when the time to to try our faith will come in a severe way that's why we need a faith that endures weariness delay and hunger a faith that will not faint and god is able to give us this faith dear brethren if we ask him and if we are willing to receive it, God will give it to us. Amen. In Luke 18.8, there is this question, right? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? It is up to us, you know, brethren, to have the answer in our hands, right? Shall he find faith in your family? Shall he find faith in your life, in my life? It is up to us, brethren. It is possible. God can give us the faith that is able to marvel Him. Now, let's go to the second thing that we need today. We need to get ready, brethren. We need to get ready. Some people say, right, we actually have to be ready. And that is true, right? And the message of getting ready, we find it in early writings, page 64. It says there, Then I was pointed to the earth, and so that there would have to be a getting ready among those who have of late embraced the third angel's message. So there is a getting ready for us, right? Getting ready among those who have of late embraced the third angel's message. And in page 64, it continues. It says, said the angel, get ready, get ready, get ready. You will have to die. A greater death to the world than you have ever yet died. So get ready, get ready, get ready. That is the message, dear brethren, that we need to listen to. Now, in 2 Corinthians 6 2, it tells us how we need to, how we are going to get ready. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of 
salvation. So when is that day, brethren? It is right now. There are other verses that say today. But I like this one when it says right now. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the opportunity that we all have and to go to Jesus as we are. To go to Him with the burden of sin. And to confess and repent, dear brethren, according to Ezekiel 18.30, it says, Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. So the message of repentance is a message for our time as well. We need to repent of our sins. We need to stop playing God. We need to stop mocking around with sin. We need to get converted. We need to repent. And what does repent mean? To stop sinning, right? To turn away from sin. And to actually come to the point where God will give us this hate against sin. And also to, to have sorrow for the sins we've committed. That is repentance. And not to fall into temptation, into the same mistakes, into the same sin again and over again. That's why the Lord says, turn yourselves from all your transgressions. And today, that is the opportunity that we have. Another Bible verse we find in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, where it says, Repent you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Brethren, that is the time. This Bible verse is talking about the times of refreshing when the Holy Spirit will be given in the latter rain, in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be given only to the ones that are repenting and confessing their sins today. Not to the ones who are living this work for later. But we need that today, brethren. Let's stop wasting our time in going back to our old life. If you are alive today, you know, that means that God is giving you the opportunity to repent, to confess, to turn to the Lord and to stop sinning. I don't know the lives that we all have, but the Lord knows, right? We may hide our sins, you know, from our beloved ones, from parents, from our children, but we cannot hide our sins from the Lord. And I appeal to you today, let's repent before it is too late. In Councils on Health, page page 633 it says brethren and sisters we need the reformation that all who are redeemed must have through the cleansing of mind and heart from every taint of sin that is what we need today brethren reformation and revival as a church you know that was going to be the topic of our yearly camp this year right our our greatest need and our greatest need is that we need to be reformed right we need to be revived and that could happen only if we go to jesus as we are with our burden of sin with all our past and surrender to him and give our hearts to him as never before and that is something that we need to do every single day Remember, God is giving you and giving me the opportunity today to surrender completely, to give you life, to leave your life, your life, your past life behind. The love of the world, you know, the fashion of this world, the things that this world is offering to you, that is going to fade away, that is going to die. The only thing we're going to take with us is our character the only thing that we're gonna take is a christ-like character and for that to take place into your life and my life 
we need to surrender today to abandon our sins. And if you think you are not able to do it, don't desperate. God is opening a way for you to do it. Go as you are to Jesus Christ. And he's willing to cleanse us from all our sins. That is the message, you know, that Satan doesn't like us to share with you. Because he is losing subjects of his kingdom. Whenever we surrender to God, Satan is losing. And he doesn't like to lose. That's why he's going he's gonna to work more and more in your life for you not to... For you not to surrender but this is our chance that we need today to surrender to the lord that's why in matthew 24 44 it says therefore be you also ready for in such an hour as you think not the son of man cometh the time when people are not waiting for it jesus will come that's why the bible says you know be you also ready be ready or get ready today right now and we know already how to do it right that is the advice that the word of god is giving us today be ready and while they went to buy in the experience of the ten virgins matthew 25 10 the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut only the ones who were ready went in, went in with the bride, bridegroom. And after that, there was no more opportunity. The door was shut. So that's why, dear brethren, we need to be ready today. We need to get ready no matter what. You're not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. And he's giving us the time and the opportunity to get ready. Also, in Maranatha chapter, uh, page 98, paragraph 4, it says, I was pointed to the remnant on the earth. The angel said to them, Will you shun the seven last plagues? Will you avoid the seven last plagues? If so, you must die that you may live. Get ready, get ready get ready it continues you must have a greater preparation than you now have sacrifice all to god lay all upon his altar self property and all a living sacrifice it will take all to enter glory so in this time brethren we need to sacrifice all to god we need to surrender whatever we are and whatever we have to the lord Self, property, and everything has to be given to the Lord as a living sacrifice. You know, the means that God has given us, we can use those means today, the money that God has given us, the properties that we have, you know. We can use all these things to the honor and glory of God, to the advancement of His cause, to the advancement of the gospel. Today, more than ever, God is trying to tell us that we have to fulfill the commission the Lord Jesus Christ has given us to take the message to all the world. We can use our offerings, our tithes. We can use the blessings that God has given us, brethren, to help, you know. And we must have a greater preparation than we have now. So let's consecrate everything, our families, the things we have and what we are. Let's consecrate everything to the Lord and He will honor His name and we will be the instruments to honor and glorify His name. Now, some people may think, you know, how do I know I am ready today? How actually can get things right with the Lord? In Maranatha, page 98, it says, if you are right with God today, you are ready if Christ should come today. If you are right with God today, you are ready if Christ should come today. So we need to make things right with God today, brethren. And then 
will be ready at any time, at any point of time in our lives, we'll be ready for the second coming of Christ. Do you want to be ready? I really want to be ready today, brethren. And we need to strive and we need to do everything that is in our hands to be right with the Lord. And guess what? He's done everything actually for us to be saved. We need to surrender and be willing to obey His commandments. So the second part was we need to be ready. The first part was we need a faith that marvels Jesus, right? Now also we need to know that our salvation is nearer. Our salvation is nearer than ever before. In Psalms 85, in verses 7 and going on, it says, Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Verse 8, I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. You see here that last part? That we don't turn again to folly, right? To sin, but go to Christ and he will speak peace unto his people and to all his saints. Verse 9, surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. So the salvation of our Lord is very near, brethren, is nigh them that fear the Lord. We need to know that, right? We need to be sure of that. And in Romans chapter 13, 11, once again, we read this verse. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now it is our salvation nearer than when we believed. In Christ's Object Lessons, page 373, it says, Every year, millions upon millions of human souls are passing into eternity and warned and unsaved. From hour to hour, in our varied life opportunities to reach and save souls are open to us, right? Opportunities to reach others are open to us. The, these opportunities are continually coming and going. God desires us to make the most of them. So you see here, we have opportunities to share the message with others. It doesn't matter where you work. It doesn't matter where you are at the moment. You have neighbors. You may have families. And this is the opportunity that we have to share with them, to make them most of our time in sharing the message of salvation. It continues. Days, weeks, and months are passing. We have one day, one week, one month less in which to do our work. A few more years at the longest. And the voice which we cannot refuse to answer will be heard saying, Give an account of thy stewardship. So, today, brethren, all of us have the opportunity to work with God, to share the message of our hope, to share the message that we have been waiting for so many years, more than a hundred years now, the second coming of Christ. We are the people who has to announce the second coming of Christ, to tell the world we've been waiting for such an event for so long, and now it is nearer than ever before. We need to share that. I want to share something with you. You know, some people say that crises are opportunities, actually, or a crisis may show ways to get opportunities or to create opportunities, right? And I was searching on the internet as well, some information and on how, you know, we can share with other people what we can do, actually. In the, even in this time of crisis, right, where everything is under restrictions, um, government laws in place to slow down the, the virus and to the spread of this virus. But how can we share, actually, even in this time of distress? We can use social media, right? That is what we can do. Instead of just scrolling down on your phone or on your computer, you know, we can share the message. Prepare a Bible verse to share with your family, with your friends. Or you can call someone and pray with them and for them as well. So those are the means that God has created. You know, technology is a blessing. We can use this opportunity to make the most of social media. 
And God, that is what God is trying to, to, to tell us today, right? We have also like WhatsApp, Twitter, Viber, uh, Facebook, Messenger, Skype, you know, Telegram, and you can, you can name it. So many platforms where we can share with people. You know, we, you can have video call conferences and talk to people, have Bible studies. Why not? Share something with them, right? And uh, people today are so much burdened with fear. And they need to listen to messages of hope. And we are the ones to tell them that the Lord Jesus Christ is soon to come. And we need to be ready for that. So God is calling you, brother, sister, young people, child. God is calling you to be an instrument in His hands. So you use these tools that we have in the world to share the message. And another thing, actually, how can we help others, right, in these difficult times? I have these pictures, these images here with messages uh, from simplereminders.com. It says, the strongest people make time to help others, even if they are struggling with their own problems. Isn't it a beautiful quote, right? The strongest people make time to help others. And that's true, you know, by hel helping others we are the ones who are helped by helping others in their struggles we are the ones who are helping ourselves in our own struggles with our own problems at the end of the day helping is a blessing helping brings joy now um, this was published on the Fox News flash and um, the young New York residents helping elderly neighbors by offering to buy groceries, medicine amid coronavirus outbreak, right? So there is this uh, kind of letter that was stuck onto a post, light post there in one of the streets. And it says to the to elderly neighbors and those with compromised health, if you need help or don't feel safe going to busy stores right now, your neighbors are here to help. They put their email down there, right? We are happy to help with grocery store or pharmacy runs for you. Stay healthy and safe. That is from foxnews.com. So you see, people in the world are trying to help others as well. And what about us? Shouldn't we be the head and not the tail? We should be helping as well other people, right? Offering ourselves to be a help in time of need, right? We can organize ourselves. We can come up with some other ideas as well in order for us to be a blessing for the neighborhood, for the people, for friends, you know, we can do that as well. And those are just ideas on how we can be still a blessing, even in times of distress as ours today. Now, I want to leave this last part with you. God is our refuge, right? I want you to keep this in mind, please. Do not fear. God is your refuge. God is with you. You don't need to feel it. You need to believe it. And in this psalm that is being shared in all the world, actually, in the Christian communities, in the Christian communities, actually, it says in Psalm 91, I'm going to read some verses, and I want you to read these verses at home as well with your family. Whenever you are having your worship, morning worship, afternoon worship, read this verse. Bible verse because this is a promise that God has, especially for these times. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and an under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. 
Do you believe that? It's a beautiful promise, isn't it? All of these verses, you know, they are being fulfilled today with us, right? A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Do you believe that? I hope you said amen right now. God is protecting you. God is looking after you. And even if it is His will for you to go through that virus, you know, He's still there, having everything under control. And we need to trust Him as a child trusts their parents. Facing times of danger, we need today Jesus Christ with us. Because these times of danger are only signs telling us that something great is going to happen. Are we ready? Do we have the faith that is going to marvel our Lord Jesus Christ? We know that our salvation is nearer than ever before. And also we know that God is our refuge. So, my question to you today is, why do you fear? Why are you scared of? If you are not scared of things, of these things happening, if you are not afraid of these things happening, praise the Lord. But if you are, you don't need to fear anything. You don't need to be afraid of anything. But trust in the Lord. Face these times of danger, trusting in the Lord. And that's my wish and prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen.